Thanks to Freeths for hosting this with Placetech. The growth of cities, um, which is one of the big uh, sort of driving forces in the future of, uh, of property. And globally, 700 million baby boomers who are still working currently, who will hit retirement age by 2030. And these empty nesters will have the most disposable income. They drive a lot of the city living. Manchester's at the forefront of uh, the BTR. It's, you know, the mood music at the moment is in. Uh, placemaking is a wall of money coming into the build to rent sector, clients of mine. Doing a JV for uh, an, an app that effectively will look after their tenants across the various schemes and they'll be able to go into different buildings and you know access the pools or, or roof gardens and all the other physical aspects of entering into a flat will go and they'll be able to have a have it on their phone. A lot of tech to date has been used to strip cost out of service delivery by taking the human element away from the transaction. And that, I think, has negative consequences for social isolation, uh, ultimately mental health. So I think, for the future, tech really must be used to connect people. If we can keep money in the local economy and keep recirculating it with technology, that will really benefit the places that we live in. As soon as you buy a house, you're geographically trapped to where you can go and get a job. So actually, if you can unlock the mechanism for getting those guys and gals out of their large homes that they've grown up in and, and effectively empty nesters into city centre living. I think there's a sort of blockage at the top at the moment. How do you persuade somebody who's had a detached house with a garden that they want to live in an apartment and that's perhaps where the tech side of things can, can, can help? And coming with the technology comes the things that actually want to keep people in the city centres, schools, the hospitals, the healthcare, the services. A lot of this is about the <laughs> the kind of occupier focused thing, you know, where, where you can choose the services that, that you want or, you know, and, and create a, a bespoke you know, experience for yourself, but have different generations living in these new city centre communities. The age of the cities there is important as well, because if you're in America where everything's new and it's been laid out in a sensible grid system, it's a lot easier. So I think we have more of a challenge in the UK. And it's all about the design of that, getting that in at, at stage one design and working that through into development and planning for the future, not designing for now, but designing for when the, when the building's going to be built. Important things which are pinned to the overall sustainability agenda, which is ultimately what we're going to have to start thinking about, because we're not living within our means. If you look at Manchester the last 20 years, real estate-wise, it's been fantastic. But actually what hasn't gone with it is the infrastructure. You know, it's amazing it hasn't got an underground network. You know, it's incredible. Most people my age are up to about 30, none of them driving to work. But if people say 40 and above, you'll never see them getting the tram or bus to work. I think the congestion and the other sides to it will sort itself out to a certain extent. But they need to expand our capacity on things like the trams, the trains, like Northern Rail just put the passage in the morning if you're trying to get onto it. The amount of power that you're going to need when everyone plugs in, the basic power infrastructure needs to ramp up significantly. I mean, we're involved in city plans in Asia and Africa and all sorts of places. So it's sort of, um, you know, it's happening on a mass migration scale there. And yes, those places in the rural areas are left behind. Kind of low-rise co-living, so looking at the towns, not, not just the cities, so you Boltons and your stop ports and places like that and trying to create these sort of communities. Our definition of city will mean that it's kind of sp sprawled. We're building a, a platform for the occupier experience. They want to retain the data within buildings so they create a community where they can invite their supply chain into the platform and so you have all the information um, on that building um, and then when it comes to a refurb or there's a management issue that data is already in the platform and you're not having to then have issues such as on-site visits, uh, people coming out just to look at issues. So you've got the sustainability side there. A lot of the data that's coming out of building management systems, they're producing the data but it's not being analysed. It's not being analysed yeah, so the efficiency and the, the sustainability issue is not being, not being created and that's a real issue. So if you can get a, a smart platform that analyses that data and looks at ways of improving the, yeah. the, the building management system, the efficiencies of the M&E, uh, yeah. it can create massive savings. It's been a slow uptake but it's coming. Yeah. Densification is happening just through the market economy because if you look at most box building house builders now most of the houses are now three stories because land is now so expensive yeah. they are driving what's the next stage of that density it's starting to become home working working from home mm -hmm. agile working flexible working but actually as soon as the trend for city living develops 
there could be more of a trend to move out of the city. There's almost two themes that are springing up. One is uh, technology for, for, for user experience, for want of a better word. How is that going to enhance our, our use of public services? And the other one is, is about the localisation, uh, which almost ties into how are we going to work in the future. Maybe the suburban towns and um, peripheral towns that could be a way that they're revitalised. That people want to be in touch with other people. They don't really want to be sat at home on their own. Um, but again, they don't. Do they feel the need to commute in? Mm. We put um, a third space into a school in Singapore. All their parents are kind of, you know, tech-enabled, young entrepreneurs, all that sort of stuff. And they, the drop-off was becoming a networking environment. Right. So they just put a cafe there. They put loads of desks and tables and chairs, and suddenly they had a co-work environment by default. But are you going to find people don't trust? Are they being recorded all the time? How is their data being used? Who, who, is, who is picking up on this data as to what you're buying if you're going to use an app, for instance, for your shopping? How do you get people to buy into them if they're going to be concerned about that kind of thing? We're all assuming, aren't we, that the future is going to be full of tech, but actually we're second-guessing the future, and the future might be, you know, a future of low-tech because people don't want it anymore. Maybe the, maybe the pendulum swings the other way for a while.